investmentideas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. In today's podcast, going to be looking at a few public company announcements from Body and Mind Incorporated trading on the CSE as BAMM and the OTCQB as BMMJ. Also looking at Fire and Flower Holdings Corporation trading on the TSX as FAF. The Green Organic Dutchman Holdings Limited trading on the TSX as TGOD and the OTC as TGODF. As well as announcements, or sorry, comments um, from Aurora Cannabis trading on the New York Stock Exchange as ACB and the TSX as ACB, as well as Canopy Growth Corporation trading on the NASDAQ as CGC and the TSX as WEED. So first today, starting with Body and Mind Incorporated, a multi-state cannabis operator, and Her Highness, a growing cannabis brand designed to introduce and educate women around cannabis, who announced today the launch of the Her Highness brand in Nevada through their production licensing agreement. Now, Her Highness will launch Quarantine Queen, a 20-pack of indoor-grown pre-rolls and the brand's fan-favorite Giggle and High Priestess vape pens, and Her Highness lip logo canvas totes will complement each purchase at select dispensaries. Now, also launching in Nevada through the BAM partnership is Her Highness Last Prisoner Project pre-roll collection, individual pre-roll and lighter sets that portray the moving stories of one of three women who are incarcerated due to non-violent cannabis offenses. Now, proceeds from the Last Prisoner Project pre-roll collection support women with cannabis convictions who are working to be released from prison or re-entering after release. We're excited to partner with Her Highness as Nevada cannabis market continues to see strong increases in year-over-year sales, stated Michael Mills, the CEO of Body and Mind. Our new production facility, combined with our strong distribution platform, offers a turnkey opportunity for Her Highness to grow their innovative brand in the expanding Nevada market. Now, already retailing through California, Her Highness is a cannabis lifestyle brand built with a goal to capture the female cannabis market. And with an elevated range of thoughtfully reimagined cannabis products for enjoyment and self-care, Her Highness satisfies every woman's cannabis curiosity and craving. We're thrilled to be launching with Body and Mind as our partner in Nevada. Known for dedication to quality and effective marketing penetration, they really understand our brand and passion for our mission, stated Allison Congrad, the founder of Her Highness. Now, this level of commitment to detail and support we've seen already tells us on path to success in the exciting market. <clears throat> now, through the partnership with BAM, Her Highness line of cannabis products are now available at dispensaries through Nevada, and you can check it out at bamcannabis.com slash Nevada. Um, so, another female-focused brand coming to the Nevada market. I do, I've talked about a lot about the success of female-focused brands in the past, and I do think, in general, this is going to be a smart play for anyone in the cannabis sector is to continue to focus on the growing largest segment of cannabis consumers, which is women, especially of over 30 and up. Um, that continues to be the most dominating sector of most built-out cannabis markets. So when we're looking at Canada, when we're looking at California, when we're looking at Colorado, and now starting to look at Nevada, um, in these established markets where cannabis sales are continuing to increase and we're seeing more and more consumers coming into this industry, it continues to be a trend that more and more of the consumers coming in are, again, women in their sort of 25 to 50 and up. Um, and they continue to be more and more of the percentage of sales, especially for new products. And so focusing on next generation products with women in mind for their branding, it's going to be a smart play. And I do think you'll see a few more of these types of launches within Nevada. Um, again, I've said before that Nevada continues to be a market that's eventually probably going to overplay the California market, um, especially as they've been quite fast about expanding their retail footprints, expanding production and expanding next generation products. Next, looking at Fire and Flower Holdings Corporation, who announced that stores will once again offer free best-in-class home delivery and curbside pickup to safely and responsibly service its customers during the newly mandated Toronto and Peel region lockdown in the province of Ontario. So on Monday, customers could easily order their cannabis products from Fire and Flower Toronto locations using the e-commerce platform at fireandflower.com and choose between either free same-day delivery to their homes or to come to the nearest store for curbside service, ensuring that the health and safety of Fire and Flower customers and team members. Obviously, on Friday, November 20th, Attorney General Doug Downey approved an emergency order placing the Toronto and Peel regions under a new lockdown to combat COVID-19. And on Sunday, November 22nd, Ontario Regulation 65420 was made allowing cannabis retail stores located in the lockdown regions to operate through e-commerce, curbside pickup, and home delivery services. We applaud Attorney General Doug Downey for the practical solution of allowing provincially licensed cannabis retailers the same e-commerce abilities and delivery and curbside pickup that all other retails have during this period of lockdown, said Trevor Fencott, the Chief Executive Officer of Fire and Flower. 
Now, this act allows us to safely provide services to our customers and continue to combat the burgeoning legal market during these challenging times. As the legal industry steps up for the second time and invests in safe delivery for our customers, we hope the provincial government will recognize that the Ontario Cannabis Store's monopoly on delivery is an unnecessary burden on public health, taxpayers, customers, and economic growth in the province, continued Vendicott. Lockdowns will eventually end, but the road to economic recovery for private businesses will be difficult, and the large legal market will continue to go un sorry, the large illegal market will continue to go unchallenged unless the government makes these changes permanent. Our customers expect e commerce and delivery options from every other kind of retail in the province and deserve to receive equitable treatment for licensed cannabis retailers. Now, Fire and Flower and Hi Fi Digital teams are re established in operating procedures and technology that safely served customers through online payment, curbside pickup, and home delivery services earlier this year when the province was initially combating the pandemic. And Fire and Flower has a distinct competitive advantage as online ordering, curbside pickup, and delivery home availability become available and the ability to communicate with almost 178,000 members in its Sparks Reward program on the Hi Fire digital platform. Uh, so obviously, Fire and Flower I've talked a ton about during this whole COVID pandemic. They've been a retail development in Canada that has done absolutely fantastic when it comes to dealing with different restrictions created by the pandemic. Uh, now in Ontario, putting their best foot forward. Um, I don't assume they'll have any difficulties continuing to be able to deliver um, their products safely without any sort of issues. And they are the most sort of well-established e-commerce setup for retail within the Canada cannabis space. And I really do hope that hopefully Ontario, as well as BC, um, there's potential lockdowns coming for BC in the next coming months. And hopefully this will be the final step for the BC government to realize the idiocy of the uh, monopoly on BC delivery that we have here. Again, in Ontario, same problem. It's being dissipated right now during this lockdown. But in general, uh, again, once the lockdown goes out of effect, uh, you could see, again, the Ontario Liquor Branch just taking over that delivery again and not doing a very good job of it. And uh, again, we've seen in all the other provinces where delivery is accessible that this has taken on a huge benefit for the cannabis industry. And hopefully uh, both BC and Ontario sort of change their ways after this um, because that is a necessary step for this industry to continue to evolve and for private retailers to actually be able to maintain their licenses and their business operations. Next, looking at the Green Organic Dutchman's Holding Limited, who announced it's received an export certificate from Health Canada. This certificate enables TGOD to complete its first shipment of medical cannabis to Germany, where it will undergo stability testing and the last step before the company can commence commercialization in 2021. This is an important milestone as we get ready to begin the international shipping of our certified organically grown medical cannabis products. Germany is the first of several markets that we're planning to supply, and other countries that we anticipate shipping to in the future are Australia and Mexico, commented Sean Bovington, the interim CEO of TGOD. We chose to obtain an EU GMP certification for Germany because it's the highest standards in its progress of medical cannabis framework, added Bobington. Uh, so Green Organic Dutchman finally getting ready for some international expansion. Uh, again, I've talked a lot about the difficulties of focusing on certified organically grown cannabis right now within the industry, as that is a great concept for maybe three to five years down the road, but right now... The consumer is just not educated enough or concerned enough with organically grown cannabis. And again, most of your growing conditions are mostly organic. They've just focused on actually getting fully certified, which could benefit them in the long term, but for the short term continues to be a difficulty for this company to compete regularly just based on price points uh, within at least the Canadian market. They could do better within Germany and other markets where taste preferences and concerns from consumers are very different. Um, but I think over the long term, they're playing a long term game where they're hoping that within three to five years, there will be a demand and request for organic certified cannabis. I don't know if that's going to pan out for them, uh, but hopefully at least them getting into other markets will help them alleviate some of the pressure from their sales products in Canada and allow them to focus on next generation products um, as they're able to sort of diversify their sales and spread out their product a little bit better. Uh, lastly, today we look at comments from the Wall Street Reporter, uh, which you can click on the link attached in the article, from both Aurora Cannabis CEO Michael Martin, sorry, Miguel Martin, who commented on Aurora's focus on delivering quality revenue through premium brands, as well as Canopy Growth Corporation CEO David Klein, who discussed how momentum is building on a path to profitability. Both those stocks, as well as Tilray and some of the larger producer stocks, have been trading up anywhere from 10 to 30% today. Um, a lot of that comes on the news from finally. Uh, 
having Joe Biden accepted as the president-elect who's going to be coming into office. I think that's stability and consistency is what a lot of these companies were looking for. And it also leans towards the expectation that, again, this industry is really excited about and continues to build momentum towards, which is the State Banking Act, which is expected to come out this year, passed to the Senate. And again, if that happens, a huge amount of financial money is going to be expected to come into the cannabis industry or is at least able to come into the cannabis industry, whether the market just gets flooded overnight or whether it's a slow progression uh, is still yet to be determined. But this also frees up a lot of opportunities for U.S. based companies to become publicly traded and have U.S. financial investment. I've talked a lot about how we've seen over the last coming months, uh, lots of U.S. based companies that have been private for the last couple of years now focusing on going public again in anticipation of this flood of financial uh, institutions into the market. So CEO Miguel Martin commented, the consumer demonstrated very dynamic tendencies with market share moving very quickly between brands, unlike in more stable CPG categories. This provides us with a great opening for our pivot to premium brands. Data from Canada and other mature markets indicate that premium and super premium brands have been and will continue to be successful in all formats. Therefore, Aurora has a real opportunity for a more articulated and balanced portfolio offered with a greater focus on higher margin and sustainable premium assets such as vapes, pre-rolls, and premium flower offerings across multiple price tiers. We're also working to expand our leading concentrates and to refocus on dried flower businesses towards higher gross profit dollar pools. The key, of course, is to ensure that in doing so, we're delivering more dollars to the gross profit line versus simply just delivering low margin revenue. We are therefore much more interested in our market share within premium and super premium categories, along with our market share of categories such as vapor, pre-rolls, and concentrates that are margin accretive compared to our market share in the deep discount flower business. Our intention is to generate not just revenue, but quality revenue that will deliver a healthy gross profit dollar, as opposed to essentially just a gross profit margin percentage. So Aurora Cannabis, uh, they've mentioned this several times, they're focused on premium Mainly that's because lo most of these large LPs realize, uh, and I think are starting to realize, that when it comes to lower cost brands or lower cost bud, they're never going to be able to compete with global competitors. Again, I've talked about the Chiron Life Sciences and the companies coming out of Israel that are aiming for price points of about 10 to 20 cents a gram. Once that does become internationally accepted and can be exported into Canadian or U.S. markets, um, any of these large scale producers won't be able to compete with that. The other big difference is that a lot of them have just had badly received uh, consumer reviews from all of their sort of mid-level to lower level bud. And really you're seeing more and more consumers focused on the premium market just because the quality for all the non-premium bud uh, is so terrible that people just aren't willing to spend the money on it anymore. And as well, there's also a few other producers, for instance, um, uh, Pearson Farms, who has really done a good job of doing bulk, low-cost cannabis. Um, so they're one of the companies that's really focused on their half-ounce and ounce portions and are dominating that sector. So I think for either Aurora or Canopy or any of these large-scale producers, they're now starting to focus on premium brands, on brand cultivation. Um, so now looking next at CEO David Klein from Canopy Growth. Momentum is building across our key businesses as our new strategy is coming to fruition. We achieved record quarterly revenue in the quarter two, led by our Canadian recreational business and strength across our strategic businesses, including Storks and Bickle. Now, this works in bio steel. We're continuing to improve execution and agility, and our fill rates are now consistently exceeding 90%, and our flower quality improvement program is generating positive revenues and improved our new rep sorry, product development process to allow us to bring better products to market faster. And we're accelerating our path to profitability, notably in the largest market, Canada. And I'm confident that we're now firmly on a path to achieve positive adjusted EBITDA at some point next fiscal year. We're building a portfolio of scalable brands across cannabis and CPG, and our goal is to become a cannabis-focused CPG company. We're bringing our THC brands such as Tweed and Houseplant into the U.S. market through multi-state operator relationships, our CBD line extensions, and we're growing new to world CBD brands such as Martha Stewart to meet consumer needs. And we're establishing routes to market with our CBD brands such as BioSteel. This works in Storks' Bickle. And these are strong brands in their own right with distinct value propositions. And building these brands today has allows us to generate revenues without the headwinds of regulatory challenges. And then we plan to line extend these brands into CBD and even THC as regulations evolve. And we will later layer in additional brands over time, which will create further scale with our existing distribution networks and further build our relationships with retailers. 
Um, so again, canopy growth obviously has been focusing on the U.S. market for a long time. Now going to really be pushing that envelope uh, by bringing in Tweed and Houseplant into the U.S. market. I think those will be obviously well received. Um, any brands endorsed or basically created by Snoop Dogg and Seth Rogen, I'm assuming, will be well received within the U.S. market as they were within the Canadian market. Martha Stewart CBD brand is going to be a huge aggressive move for them within the CBD space. Um, and really, Canopy Growth now is starting to have their plan of U.S. involvement. That's something that's been sort of on the back burner for a long time. But again, regulations look like they're going to be changing or at least allowing their entrance within the next year. And through their partnerships with different multi-state operators, they do have a leg up compared to some of their other Canadian competitors. And uh, really mentioning their BioSteel, the Works, and Storks and Bickle, really aggressive brands to have that aren't directly touching the plant. And Storks and Bickle specifically is one of the most well-known vaporizer brands that's out there, created the Volcano. Uh, all of their brands are very well received, very well reviewed and very aggressively sold within most cannabis retail today and continue to dominate the medical space as sort of the best in brand medical vaporizers available. Um, the only sort of close competition behind them is PAX, but that's not really a quality issue, more of a branding competition issue. And uh, I do think that in the next year or so, you're going to see cannabis growth kind of move quite aggressively into other markets outside of Canada. And again, they have actually done better than a lot of people suspected within the Canadian market due to their smaller brands such as Houseplant, Tweed, and a lot of the brands that they've picked up. Again, Canopy Growth Weed isn't maybe the best stuff out there, but a lot of the brands that they've created and bought up have been doing quite well and have been very well received. That's all for today's podcast. Enjoy the rest of your day. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website, and this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.